Hi boys and girls, it's Marcy Chavales and it's story time. Today's story is called I Am Harriet Tubman by Brad Meltzer, illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. This story is, a, is going to be teaching us about a famous American named Harriet Tubman. Let's flip the book over and learn a little bit more. I am Harriet Tubman. Follow me. I will lead the way to freedom. So what do you think Harriet Tubman's going to do? That's right. Lead people to freedom. Let's listen along and learn about Harriet Tubman. Are you ready? All right, let's grow. I am Harriet Tubman. I am Harriet Tubman. Do you know what the North Star is? It's one of the brightest stars in the sky. Unlike the other stars, which may seem to move, the North Star always stays where it is. When you find it, it'll show you which way is north. Today, people know my name as Harriet Tubman, but when I was born, I was called Araminta or Minty. I was the fifth of nine children born in Maryland around 1822. When's your birthday? I don't know. How can you not know your own birthday? It's because I was enslaved. Back when I was growing up in certain parts of the country, if you were black, you were most likely enslaved. We didn't have a choice. Being enslaved meant we were forced to work without pay. We were treated terribly. Now, boys and girls, I wanna stop right there. For those of you who don't know what that means because you are black, I'm gonna explain it a little bit. When we refer to people who are black, we refer to people whose grandparents and parents and great grandparents and great 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 grandparents and great 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 grandparents came from the continent of Africa. So when we say black we think of people whose ancestors were from the continent of Africa. Let's continue on. Look at these people who are being forced to work and not being paid. They were enslaved. Let's see what they say. I cut my hand. I don't care. Keep working. Can we have water? No, keep going. Oh, that's not very kind. That seems like a not an awesome way to live or a good way to be treated. This is horrific. We lived in tiny shacks with no windows. We slept on the floor or in boxes filled with straw. As kids, we had to wear sacks and they certainly didn't celebrate our birthdays or keep records of when we were born. Boys and girls, how would you like to live that way? Would you like to live and work and not be paid? Would you like to wear sacks for your clothes? Would you like to sleep on the floor and in a place that didn't have windows? Nobody celebrate your birthday? How would you feel? Yeah, I would feel really sad and upset too because that's not fair and that's not right. Worst of all, being enslaved meant we were property, no different from a horse or a piece of furniture. That meant my family, my mom and dad included, was owned by someone else. They could sell us, and they did. Where are my sisters going? Our owners sold them. They'll have new owners now. Please, Mama, please don't let them take us. Slaves were supposed to do whatever our owners told us to do. Oh, that's heartbreaking. We could split up families because they treated beautiful people who have dignity and honor like they were animals and property. It's not okay. The next time they came, though, my mother was ready. Someone wanted to buy my younger brother. She had asked other slaves to help her hide my brother in the woods for nearly a month, but eventually they found him. We're here for your boy. You can't have him. What'd you say? You heard me. The first man that comes into my house, I will hit him square in the head. It was a powerful moment. My mother standing up to those men. Was it dangerous? 
definitely, but it was right. After that, they didn't sell my brother. Oh, boys and girls, this is so horrific. This is so sad, it hurts my heart. There are people who want to take away her little boy, just like they took away her little girls. She's tired of them splitting up her family. She's standing up. Sometimes it's dangerous to stand up for what's right, but you got to do it anyway, like she did, and she protected her son. Mm, this is so sad. As early as I can remember, I loved listening to my mother tell stories. She taught me some of life's most important lessons. Being enslaved, it was against the law for us to read or write. But she told me stories from the Bible, including the tale of Moses. He was the leader of the Israelites. He'd led them out of slavery to freedom. Freedom from slavery, huh? I like this story. When I was around six years old, it was my turn to start working. Oh my goodness, boys and girls, six years old, working? Do you have a job at six years old? No, most six-year-olds just get to play and go to school in kindergarten or first grade, but not back then, not people who were enslaved, they had to work. I still lived with my family, but my owners hired me out to another farm. See that water? We set traps for muskrats in there. Get in and see if we caught any, but, but, but the water is freezing. You talking back to me? You get in that water or else. What would happen if we didn't do what they said? Our owners would whip us or worse. You stop working, now you're in real trouble. Oh my goodness, this grown up is making her work in conditions that were not safe and punishing her really harshly when she doesn't. This is terrible and unfair. I know it's scary, but by hearing my story, I hope you'll find strength you never knew you had. That's what happened when I was around seven years old. I was working in my owner's house and went to grab a lump of sugar from a nearby bowl. I had never tasted sugar before. It looked so good. How dare you touch my sugar? She reached for something to hit me with. I ran as fast as I could. When I got to someone else's farm, I hid in their pig pen. That's how scared I was. For five days, I stayed there, hiding in the mud, fighting the pigs for potato peelings and scraps of food. Eventually, I was starving and came back. When I did, they beat me. But now people started to realize I wasn't afraid to protect myself. By the time I was 12, I was working outdoors every day where the hardest work was done. I hoed, harvested, and lifted heavy barrels of flour. I got so strong and was chopping so much wood, even the men could barely keep up. How much did she chop? Half a cord? Girls can't do that much. You tell her that. Whoa, look at her go. Working in the fields gave me more than physical strength. It gave me time to learn from other enslaved people. Time to consider new ideas. Did you hear? Three slaves escaped from the Brodas plantation. Escaped? They went up north and out of Maryland where slavery is illegal. Up there, everyone's free. Just like we should be. Wow, looks like they're really thinking about how to get out of this situation because this is not right and it's not good. So they wanna be free. Would you wanna be free too? I know I sure would. And my ancestors, my great, great grandma, and great, great grandpa and all their family, they wanted to be free as well. So I'm glad that they had the courage to think about how to do that. During that time, I spent many nights looking at the sky my father was the one who taught me about the North Star. It always points north. That's where black people are free, right? In the north? Exactly. Follow the North Star and you'll always know you're headed in the right direction. What 
direction do you think she's going to go? Before I go on, do you think she's going to go north, south, east, or west if she were to go away? You're right. Follow the North Star. Go north so that she could be free. Let's see. I'm predicting that she's probably going to try to be free. What do you think? Let's see. Since slavery was so terrible, you may be wondering why we didn't all run away. It was nearly impossible. One night, while doing errands at a nearby store, I saw an enslaved man who had left his farm without permission. Grab him! He belongs to me! I could have stopped that man from running, but I refused to. Enraged, a supervisor from the farm picked up a heavy weight, aiming for the slave. Pow! It hit me instead. Hard. Oh my goodness. I got knocked out. It was an injury that forever changed my life. Since I didn't die, I decided God had a plan for me and was guiding and protecting me. Wow, Harriet's got a lot of faith. She's thinking, man, no matter what's going on, God's got a plan, and I know he does too. God has a plan for each and every one of us. It's horrible that he treated that boy like that and hurt her. Sometimes we start thinking people are different, and that's a bad thing. We think about it, and then we start doing things that show our heart like throwing things at someone that is that's just just not okay boys and girls that's evil after my injury i started having vivid dreams i'd be flying like a bird over fields and towns over rivers and mountains in the air i'd reach a great fence and on the other side would be a big beautiful field but each time no matter how hard I tried, I can never get over that line. When I was around 22, I got married and got rid of my childhood name. Now I was Harriet Tubman. Soon after, I found out that I was about to be sold. What should we do, Harriet? Our new owner may be even meaner than this one. Someone else who could take me from my family and hurt me? I knew there was only one choice. I must escape. Man, she's had loss. She lost her siblings. Now she's getting married and she's about to lose the person she loves again. Mm. My brothers and I planned to escape, but they got scared and turned back. So I went all by myself. I traveled by night following the North Star, just like my father had taught me. This is the way. It'll always lead me right. I stayed in the houses of people who wanted to help us find freedom. There are slave hunters all over. Wear these men's clothes so no one will recognize you. You're saving my life. Oh, boys and girls, so thankful for those men and women who helped people like Harriet Tubman escape from slavery. Sometimes when people who are having a hard time or being treated unfairly don't have a voice or don't have the power to help themselves, we rely on people like this woman to stand up for what's right and use the things that she has and that he might have to help. You could be one of those people too. If you see someone being treated unfairly, use the things you have to speak up and to step out and help. Every person makes a difference, just like this one lady is making a difference in her life. I was now traveling on what was called the Underground Railroad. It wasn't a real railroad. It didn't have tracks or train cars, and it didn't go underground. It was people who didn't like slavery secretly helping people escaping from slavery. But it did have special stations, safe hiding places run by black and white helpers called conductors. It even had its own signals. The password for the next safe house is a hoot sound like an owl. Use that and they'll give you a place to sleep. Thank you for protecting me. On the Underground Railroad, we were safe. Look, there's more people working together to help those who cannot help themselves. 
Eventually, I made it to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Slavery was illegal there. I was free now, no longer enslaved. Soon I had a regular job, cleaning and cooking, and a regular place to live. I could have stayed there forever. But then I got news from where I used to live in Maryland. One of your nieces and her family, they're about to be sold to a new owner. What should we do? The answer was obvious. I need to go back to help them escape too. That's exactly what I did. A year after I escaped, I snuck back into Maryland. Thanks to my own trip on the Underground Railroad, I knew people who would help us. Wow, she's going to be brave and use now the things that she knows, the directions and the power that she's got to go help others. And she's going to work with a network. She's going to go to other people who are standing up for what's right and work together to make a difference. How inspiring. We can hide them in here. When it's dark, we'll sneak them onto a boat and get them out of the state. Harriet, you sure this is smart? If you get caught helping them, they'll sell you back into slavery. You'll lose your freedom and everything you have. No question, it wasn't safe, but it was right. And she's giving up everything she has to help other people. That's bravery, man. One step at a time, one person at a time, doing what's right. In a daring escape, we snuck my niece and her family to the closest city, Baltimore, Maryland. Follow me. Then out of the state to Philadelphia. So we're free now? We're not slaves anymore? You're free. They were the first people I rescued, but they certainly weren't the last. On my next trip back to Maryland, I helped free my youngest brother, whose name was Moses, as well as two other men. The way you're leading people to freedom, you sure I'm the one who should be called Moses? After that, I made another rescue trip and another. I rescued family and friends. On the Underground Railroad, we used hiding places like attics, potato cellars, and barns. Some folks even built secret tunnels and hidden rooms like this fake closet. In here, you'll be safe. Come on, follow me. I also continued wearing disguises. Why are you dressed like an old lady? So no one will recognize me. Put this on. We're gonna get you out of here. Follow me. That woman, she's saving our lives. Man, all this took lots of effort and lots of teamwork, bravery and courage and people using what they had to make a difference. They didn't wait for some big group to do anything, each person did what they could to make a difference. And that ended up making a life-changing difference for so many people. With each trip, our Underground Railroad helped more slaves escape. Soon they started calling me the Moses of my people. Now she's the one who's leading us to freedom. It took a lot of help from other members of the Underground Railroad, like John Brown, another great leader who fought so that black people could be free. I was so impressed with Harriet's skills and bravery, I started calling her General Tubman. Here are some of these people that helped. Thomas Garrett, William Still, John Brown, and Lucretia Mott. To stay out of sight, I traveled by night, sticking to the back roads. I also made many of my trips in the winter when people couldn't be outside their homes. Occasionally, it was so hard to walk over the mountain passes, even the bigger and supposedly stronger men would want to stop. You sure it's safe? It looks deep. The water's cold, but you'll make it. Now hurry before anyone sees us. Follow me. I always kept them going, leading the way. On this particular night, we ran out of money, but I was so committed to keep everyone safe that I gave away some of my own clothing including my underwear, to pay for the people, to pay for the place where we slept. So she's using her money to protect the people and even giving the clothes off her back to pay for the place that they slept. Man, what a leader. 
On another trip to buy some live chickens, I spotted one of my old masters, someone I used to work for when I was enslaved. As he came near me, I pulled on a string around the chickens' legs and made them flap and scream. Bark, 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 bark. He was so distracted by their noise, he never realized that he was this close to catching me. Over 11 years, I went back to Maryland 13 times, personally freeing around 70 people. To keep them safe, I led many of them to Canada, which is where I brought my brought five of my siblings, my niece, and even my own parents. My family had been separated for nearly seven years. The more I fought against slavery, the more I realized that the only way to win was to end slavery itself. That chance came as the Civil War began. The northern part of the country wants to stop slavery. The South wants to keep it. At first, I took care of wounded soldiers, but soon my best talents were put to use. This is Secretary of War Edwin Stanton. Look at this information she has collected. Harriet Tubman and her spy ring are remarkable. Soon after, I became the first American woman ever to lead an armed raid into enemy territory. With the information we found, we successfully fought the Southern soldiers. Most important, we proved that black people could serve in the military just as well as white people. As a master spy for the North, I led groups of scouts into South Carolina to scope out what the other side was doing. Shh, this way, they won't see us coming. Follow me. Follow me. I'm glad that she's fighting to end slavery. Sometimes we do things on our own to make change and that's not enough. Sometimes the whole thing that was wrong needs to go, like slavery. I'm glad that brave men and women fought to stop that. Eventually, the North won the Civil War and slavery ended. But that didn't mean my battles were over. I became a community activist, then traveled around the country talking about injustice. She's using her words. Just because a law changes, like in the Civil War, that doesn't mean people's lives change. Things that were unfair continued, and she knew that, so she decided to use her voice to continue to stand up so that things would be fair. Did you know that after the Civil War, black soldiers were still paid less than white soldiers? They even sent us to different hospitals and made us pay for our own uniforms. That's not fair! After the war, I was so poor, I had to burn pieces of my fence for firewood. But as always, I kept battling, helping those who needed it. Harriet, you have no money. Why are you inviting people into your home? They have no place to go. How can I turn them away? You're safe now, folks. Follow me. This is the ultimate sign of selflessness. She is putting others before herself and continuing to make a difference for so many. When I was nearly 90 years old, my dream of helping others grew even bigger as I established a new home in Auburn, New York for poor, old, and sick African Americans. We'll take care of you here. In my life, I was told I couldn't make my own choices, told I would never escape, but I did. I fought for my independence. And once I had breathed the air of freedom, I knew I needed to help others breathe it too. The measure of success isn't what you achieve for yourself, it's what you do for others. Think of yourself as a bird. Some days you'll climb high, some days you'll fall, but when you pass the clouds and reach the top, you have a choice. You can stay up there and enjoy the view, or you can go back down and bring others up to join you. Wow, that's inspiring. Let's learn a little bit about how we can bring others with us. Did you know that Harriet Tubman also spoke up for women's rights, working with Susan B. Anthony to make sure women got the right to vote? Today, there are dozens of schools and parks named after her, as well as this statue in New York, recognizing her work with the Underground Railroad. 
What she did wasn't easy, but it was right. I'm following her. I'm excited that she'll be on the $20 bill, the only woman or African American on American paper money. When you help yourself, you can fly. But when you help others, you truly soar. Remember, the things you have, you can soar, look down, and bring others with you. In every life, we face hard decisions. At those times, we can make the safe choice or the right choice. Would you put yourself at risk to help someone else? Would you stand up to someone mighty in order to help someone who is weak? To answer those questions, you must follow your heart, your own North Star. It will always point you in the right direction. I am Harriet Tubman. Follow me. I will lead the way to freedom. I was the conductor of the Underground Railroad for eight years, and I can say what most conductors can't say. I never ran my train off the track, and I never lost a passenger. Harriet Tubman. This is Harriet Tubman right here. Wow, she's so brave. That she's poised, she's smart, she's beautiful. She used everything she had to help others. Let's look at some more pictures. Over here says Harriet, far left, here she is, next to her adopted daughter, Gertie, and her husband, Nelson, among others, in 1887. She even adopted and gave a permanent home to someone who didn't have a home. Let's look at this one. This is a plaque on Harriet's birthplace in Maryland. Here's another one. Memorial statue in Harlem, New York City. Here's her timeline. Around 1822, she was born a slave in Dorchester County, Maryland. 1833, she was hit in the head by a weight and seriously injured. Around 1844, she married John Tubman. They divorced seven years later. September 17, 1849, she escapes to Pennsylvania with the help with help from the Underground Railroad. In 1860, the Civil War begins. 1860 takes her last rescue mission. January 1st, 1863, President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation frees all U.S. slaves. 1863, she becomes the first woman to lead a military raid. 1865, the Civil War ends. 1869, she marries Nelson Davis. June 23, 1908, Harriet Tubman Home for the Aged officially opens. March 10, 1913, she dies in Auburn, New York. April 20, 2016, the U.S. Treasury announces future $20 bill with Harriet's face on the front. Well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this awesomely inspiring story. I hope that you can be like Harriet Tubman too, that you will use all the things that you have, your strength, your smarts, your resources, not only to help yourself, but to help others along the way, just like Harriet did. If you enjoyed this story, go ahead and click that like button below. If you wanna hear more stories, don't forget to click the bell and subscribe right now. Until next time, have a great day. Bye friends.